Good morning everybody, welcome back to the London Eye Mystery. We're going to have chapter two right now, brought to you from Hazel Platts. News of a hurricane. It started the day the letter from Aunt Gloria arrived. Aunt Gloria is my mum's sister. Mum calls her Glow and Cat calls her Auntie Glow. Dad calls her Hurricane Gloria because he says she leaves a trail of devastation in her wake. I asked him what this meant. Did it mean she was clumsy like I am? He said it wasn't so much things that she upset, which wouldn't be so bad, more people and emotions. Does that mean she's evil? I asked. Dad said she didn't do it on purpose, so no, she wasn't evil. She was just a handful. I asked him what being a handful meant, and he said it meant being larger than life. When I tried to ask what being larger than life meant, he put his hand on my shoulder. Not now, Ted, he said. The morning Aunt Gloria's letter came was the same as any other. I heard the post drop as usual on the doormat. I was on shreddy number three, and the radio we weather forecast was saying it was set fair, but with the risk of showers in the southeast. Cat was eating toast, standing up, wriggling. It wasn't that she had fleas, although that's what it looked like. She was listening to her weirdo music on headphones, which meant she wouldn't hear the weather and wouldn't wear a raincoat or bring her umbrella to school, which meant that she would get wet and I wouldn't, and this was good. Dad was hopping round in one sock, complaining about how the wa washing machine had eaten all his socks and he was late. Mum was looking through the laundry bag for a spare. Ted, get the post, Mum said. She was in her nurse's uniform, and even I know that when her words come out short and sharp like that, you do what she asks, even though I hate leaving my shreddies to turn to mush. I came back with six envelopes. Cat saw me and snatched them off me and picked out a big brown envelope and a small white one. I could see our school emblem on the white one. It was like a squashed up X, and over it, a bishop's hat, which is called a mitre. Cat tried to hide it behind the big brown envelope, but Mum saw her. Not so fast, Katrina, Mum said. When Mum calls Cat Katrina, you know that trouble is coming. Cat's lips pressed up tight. She handed over the post, all items except the brown envelope, which she held up for all to see that it was addressed to her, Katrina Spark. She opened it and a catalogue came out. It was called Hair Flare. She walked over to the door, head nodding. I etched Shreddy's numbers seven through 17. Dad started humming the theme tune of Laurel and Hardy, his favorite thing to watch on TV. He got the other sock on and was buttering toast and his hair stood on end. And mum would have said he looked the spit of Stan. The spit is a way to say exactly like, but don't ask me why. Anyway, Stan has brown hair and Dad's hair is fair, like mine, so he doesn't look exactly like Stan at all. Katrina, Mum bellowed. The 18th shreddy fell off my spoon. What? This letter is from your school. What letter from my school? This letter, the one you tried to hide. What about it? It says you were missing last week without a sick note. Last Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Well? Well what? Where were you? She was AWOL, Mum, I suggested. Cat and Mum stared at me. AWOL? Like in the army, I explained. Absent without leave. Get stuffed, you creep, Cat hissed. She went out and slammed the door after her. The radio programme switched back to the news. Turn that thing off, Ted, Mum said. I fiddled with the knob, but she pulled the plug out of the socket instead. The silence. I heard Dad munching some toast. She's going up the rails, Ben, Mum said to Dad. Up the rails, I repeated, thinking of train accidents. I suppose Mum was saying something about Katrina being AWOL. Maybe off the rails was another way of saying skiving, which means not going to school when you should. But I didn't dare to check, not with Mum in that mood. Off the rails and nobody cares, she said. I used to bunk off at her age, Dad said. I'd spend the day riding buses and smoking fags in the park. My 20th shreddy nearly went down the, the wrong way. The thought of Dad with a cigarette in hand was very strange. He never smokes now. Dad tapped Mum's shoulder, and when she looked up at him, he kissed her on the middle of the forehead. It gave off a funny squeak that nearly put me off the rest of my shreddies. Let's discuss it tonight, Faith. I've got to run. There's a meeting about blowing up the barracks. Mum's lips went up a bit. OK, love. Later. I should explain here that Dad is not a terrorist who goes around blowing up the places where soldiers live. 
He is a demolition expert. And the barracks was the local name for Barrington Heights, the tallest tower block in our South London borough. It used to be where people who are socially excluded lived. Being socially excluded is a bit like being excluded from school. Instead of a head teacher telling you you have to leave, it's more that everybody in the rest of society acts like you don't exist. And you end up with all the other people who are being ignored. And you're so angry that society is treating you like this that you take drugs and shoplift and form gangs in revenge. And the people in Barrington Heights used to do all those things. Dad said it was not that the people were bad to begin with. He said the building was sick and made, hit, made them sick too, a bit like a virus. So he and the council had decided to move them to new homes and blow up the building and start again. Dad got his jacket on. He said, goodbye, Ted, to me and went out. Then Mum sat down again and went through the rest of the post. She got to the last piece, a pale lilac envelope. I saw her holding it to her nose and sniffing it as if it was edible. Then she smiled. Her lips went right up, but her eyes went watery. This meant she was sad and happy at the same time. Glory be, she whispered. She opened it and read what was inside. I ate my last three shreddies, numbers 35 through 37. She put down the lilac sheet of paper and ruffled the top of my head, a thing she does sometimes which makes my hand shake itself out. Hold tight, Ted, she said. A hurricane's coming. No, it isn't, I said. We're moving into a large anticyclone. I'm a meteorologist, or will be when I grow up, so I know. Hurricanes die out halfway across the Atlantic. They barely hit Britain. Even the one in 1987 wasn't technically a hurricane. The weatherman called Michael Fish, who was famous for getting it wrong, actually got it right. It was only a bad storm, and it had no name. A real hurricane is always given a name, like Hannah, which gusted up to 160 miles an hour in 1957, or Hugo, which flattened half of South Carolina in the USA in 1989, or Hurricane Katrina, a Category 5 storm which devastated New Orleans in 2005. I am sure it is no coincidence that one of the most catastrophic storms of all time had the same name as my sister. It doesn't mean it literally, Mum said, whisking my empty cereal bowl away from me. It's Hurricane Gloria who's on her way. My sister, remember? She's coming to visit us along with her son, Salem. The one who lives in Manchester. That's right. It's been more than five years since we saw them, Ted. I just don't know where the time's gone. It sounded like she thought time was something that comes and goes like the weather. I shook my head. No, Mum, I explained. Time doesn't go anywhere. It does in this house, Ted. Down a bloody black hole. I blinked at her, trying to figure out if she might have a point. She laughed and said she was joking and ruffled my hair again. Go on, Ted, off to school with you. So I went on my zigzag way across the common, thinking about time, black holes, Einstein's theory of relativity and storm warnings. I imagined Hurricane Gloria building up force as it drew nearer, leaving a trail of devastation in its wake. My thoughts were so good that I nearly ended up walking into the pond on the wrong side of the common and got to school only just in time. Down a black hole, I said to myself, as I ran across the playground. My hand shook itself out. Down a bloody black hole. <laughs>